So this is the second compound we're going to take a look at here. And formula given for you is C11H14O2. So since we have a formula, first thing we should do before even looking at the spectra here is uh, calculate the degrees of unsaturation. And so in this case, 1 half times 2 times 11 plus 2, no nitrogens, minus 14 and no halogens. Oxygen doesn't affect the calculation at all here. So 2 times 11 is 22, plus 2 is 24, minus 14 is 10, and half of that is 5. So in this case, we've got 5 degrees of unsaturation. That's quite a few, so that's a combination of 5 pi bonds plus rings. Uh, in this case, one quick way to get uh, 4 degrees of unsaturation in a hurry is to simply have a benzene ring. And we'll find out that we do indeed have a benzene ring in this case. It doesn't guarantee us that we have a benzene ring having so many degrees of unsaturation, but it is a quick way to pick up 4 degrees of unsaturation, 3 pi bonds and a ring. Uh, but in this case, let's take a look at the carbon spectrum here, and we've got 1, 2 signals down here in the alkane range. We've got 4 signals here in the aromatic range, so the benzene range, and then finally we've got this carbon down here, downfield of 160. That's a carbon double bonded to an oxygen. So in this case, again, seven total signals, two alkane, four aromatic, one carbonyl. That's what we're dealing with here. Uh, if we look then at the HNMR, we've got a total of four signals. We've got this one down here, and the only thing that shows up downfield of 10 is typically a carboxylic acid hydrogen. That's this guy right here. So, and then we've got the aromatic hydrogens. Hydrogens on a benzene ring show up around here. And then these nine down here in the alkane region. So if we look at the chemical shifts first, so one alkane signal, two aromatics, and then one carboxylic acid signal. Uh, if we take a look at the integrations, and again, I've, these have been done for you, a common practice on an exam, it's a 1 to 2 to 2 to 9 ratio, and that adds up to a grand total of 14. So it actually is the exact number of ratio of hydrogens, not just like the most reduced whole number uh, or something of that sort. So in this 1 to 2 to 2 to 9 ratio, um, I'm going to deal with the alkane region first again. And in this case, I like looking for methyl groups first, but in this case, we only have one signal in the alkane region, and it represents nine ages, which just happens to be a multiple of three. And so the question is, how do we get nine equivalent H's? Well, we get three equivalent methyl groups is the easiest way. So, and in this case, the easiest way to get three equivalent methyl groups is to have them all attached to the same carbon that's capable of undergoing free rotation. Now, it's not the only way. Technically, we'd have, we could have like a three, three-fold rotational symmetry or something like that, but that's way less common. Not impossible, but way less common. Uh, and so in this case, I'm going to start here. If this doesn't work, I'll switch to trying something with three-fold rotational symmetry. But again, this is much more common, just attaching them to the same carbon capable of free rotation. Uh, so these three methyl groups, we see that we've got a single peak. It's a singlet. And so neighbors plus one equals peak. So the number of neighbors must be zero. So this adjacent carbon has no hydrogens attached to it. And in fact, we could have predicted that it's only got one bond left and I make it to a hydrogen, then there's no way to attach it, this, you know, fragment of the molecule to anything else. Now, one thing to know, I can't make this fragment any bigger. So when you are assembling a puzzle, let's say, uh, if I decide to give you 20 pieces a day of a thousand piece puzzle for the next 50 days, um, not a great way to do it. The first day, day one, you get 20 pieces out of a thousand. They may not even go together. And you may just like be like, I'm waiting until a few days from now to start even putting this together. Uh, the idea is same here. Until you have all your fragments on the table, if you don't know two fragments are connected, don't put them together until you have all the fragments, all your puzzle pieces, so to speak, uh, in front of you. So in this case, this is just one fragment, this T-butyl group here. Let's move on. So notice we already know one other fragment as well. It's kind of implied, but let's talk about it explicitly. And that's the carboxylic acid uh, peak we've got, again, just by having this signal down here at 12. So, and it's got one more bond to make as well. And then we've got to deal with this aromatic region. So in this case, if you look at plain old benzene, now plain old benzene, so don't forget that the pi electrons here are never going to throw off the symmetry. It's really delocalized around the whole ring. But plain old benzene would actually have six hydrogens, one for each carbon. Our benzene is only going to have a total of four hydrogens, which means it's going to have two substituents coming off it. And if we take a look at the next slide, we'll see that there's three ways of actually accomplishing that. So if we take a closer look here at having two substituents coming off our benzene, and for this case, I'm going to assume it's two different substituents. If they were identical, we'd have more symmetry that I'm going to imply here. But in this case, I have an X and a Y. That just implies they're different. 
So and in this case, we have three different patterns. Now this one's called ortho disubstituted when they're on adjacent carbons. And if we look, there's no symmetry in this benzene at all. And so every single one of these hydrogens would be its own signal. And so in this aromatic region, you'd end up with four signals, not just the two that we have kind of ruling this out. Now, if we look at the next substitution pattern here, X and Y are separated by one additional carbon. We refer to that as meta disubstituted. And in this case, there's also, again, no symmetry provided X and Y are different. And so again, all four of these hydrogens would be unique and you'd end up with four signals in this aromatic region. So finally, we got this last one here. This is referred to as para disubstituted. So for X and Y. And in this case, you do have symmetry. There's a plane of symmetry right down the middle of this molecule. And as a result, these two hydrogens are equivalent and these two hydrogens are equivalent. So you end up with only two signals, each representing two hydrogens, exactly what we have. And if you look at either one of the hydrogens in this signal, so you find out he's got exactly, he's attached to this carbon, there's two adjacent carbons, no hydrogens here, but you have one hydrogen attached here, so that's one neighbor, and one neighbor will lead to a doublet, and that's exactly what we see here, a couple of doublets. So in this case, sometimes people call this an AB quartet. So, but suffice to say, it looks like two doublets that represent two hydrons each. So, and dead giveaway, you have a para disubstituted benzene ring when you see that in that six and a half to eight and a half region of the spectrum. So let's go back and put this together uh, with the rest of our spectrum and come up with the entire structure. So now we've seen that these two 2H two doublets shown up in the aromatic region indicate that we've got a para-substituted benzene ring, or para-disubstituted, so in the other four positions are H's. And in this case, this thing is symmetrical before we attach things, so it doesn't really matter which of the two remaining things you attach on there. But the one thing we should really do before we go any further is confirm that we've got all the atoms in our overall formula here. And we've got six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 carbons. We've got all 14 hydrons, and we do, as part of the carboxylic acid group, have both oxygens. And now that we know we have every piece of the puzzle on the table, now we can worry about putting it together. Now, if you look at this here, our benzene ring is the only puzzle piece that has multiple attachment points. So therefore, it's the only puzzle piece that can go in the middle of the molecule. So our carboxylic acid only has one attachment point, and our T-butyl group only has one attachment point. Therefore, they have to go on the ends. They cannot go in the middle. And so if we put this thing together, we're just going to attach uh, the carboxylic acid to one side of the benzene and the T-butyl group to the other. And in this case, I'll just put the carboxylic acid over here. And I'll put the T-butyl group here. And there is the molecule depicted in these two HNMR spectra.